Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you could join me today. I hope everybody's doing well. How would you like to take a walk with me to a beautiful enchanted forest full of moss, greenery, flowers, magical butterflies, mystical elves? That's what that necklace reminds me of. Now I know this month's collection is called May Flowers, but when I first opened up the box and looked at all the contents, it just looked very mystical and magical to me. I don't know if it was the beads, the colors, I really don't know what it was, but I absolutely loved the bargain bee box for the month of May. And today we're going to do a mini unboxing. I'm not going to do a full unboxing because I was told by one of my viewers a while ago that I don't need to do unboxings because there are too many people doing them already. But you know, I do subscribe to the bargain bee box. I actually pay for that box and I do have an agreement with them. So if you use the coupon code that I'm going to give you, I'll get a small commission, a very small commission from bargain bee box. And speaking of flowers, I haven't had a chance yet to go to the nursery to get the flowers for this season. I usually get geraniums and fuchsia plants and what else? Uh, a, a couple of other things. I used to get petunias, but petunias didn't do so well on my porch after a while. I don't know why. I think they picked up some kind of a bug or something. So after trying petunias for years and years and having them die on me, I decided to switch to begonias and they seem to do better on my porch. So anyway, guys, I'm telling you all this because I get lots of inspiration from flowers. I really do. Whenever I need inspiration, I go out to nature and I look at the flowers and the trees and the plants and it always gives me lots and lots of ideas. But what really helps me a lot is when somebody does a good job of curating a bead collection. And I can tell you guys that Bargain Bee Box does an excellent job. They always give you lots of components and beads and all kinds of gemstones. And I've always been very happy with their collections. Now, if you're not familiar with the Bargain Bee Box, I'll leave a link down below so you can go check it out. But like I said before, we are going to do a mini unboxing. And at the end of that clip, I will leave a little bit of information on the pricing and uh, on the box itself. Now, before we get started, let me remind you that if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please think about doing so because it really does help my channel and it helps me as a content creator to stay motivated to create more videos for you. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I release a video. And I know some of you are here just for the tutorial, so I'm going to leave the timestamps down below in the description section of this video. So if you want to skip forward through the unboxing and go straight to the tutorial, you can do so. And please stick around to the end because I will be modeling the necklace for you. So anyway, guys, without any further ado, let's turn the camera around and we'll get started. And here's the bargain bead box for the month of May. Obviously, it's not a box. It's an organza bag. So I don't know why they call it a bargain bead box. Maybe initially it was a box. But anyway, it really doesn't matter because I've always been very happy with the collections that they put out every month. And this month's collection is called May Flowers. The envelope did come with a description of the contents and it says this month's collection celebrates the beauty of spring. Quartz, citrine and yellow jade provide a pastel palette while focal points include two pairs of handmade lampwork glass flower buds and a carved golden quartz leaf pendant. Crystal coins and glass accents round out the colorful assortment, finished by a selection of copper finish findings and garden themed motifs. And that sounds absolutely lovely. So anyway, guys, let me go ahead and uh, remove the contents. I'm not going to go through a complete unboxing. I'm just going to give you a glimpse of what's included in this month's collection. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. So here are the beads. There's a mix of glass and gemstones here. We have this gorgeous 10 millimeter strand of quartz up here. I love this color. It's so beautiful. It's a very pretty shade of pink. And then we have this other strand here. These are eight millimeter size quartz beads. The color is violet. And we have some citrine chips, as you can see. This is a seven and a half inch strand, so that's very generous. And I really, really do love citrine, guys. It's such a gorgeous gemstone. Look at that. Look how pretty these chips are. We have some that are more opaque than others and they're in that beautiful yellowish color. It's so pretty. And here we have a strand of yellow jade. These are six millimeter size beads and it's a pretty long strand too. It's about 15 inches long and this one here is pretty long as well. This one is 14 and a half inches long. And then we have these two beautiful strands of faceted glass or crystal and they're actually coin beads and the description says they're spiral faceted crystal coin beads. And I think it's because of the way they're faceted. They're faceted in a spiral manner, which is very unusual and very pretty. And look at these two colors, guys. The light one is called light lilac and the darker one is called lavender. And they're six millimeters in size and they're both eight inch strands. And then we have this strand here. These are bicone beads. And what makes these so unique is that they're cat's eye glass bicone beads. I don't think I've ever seen bicone beads like that. And look at this gorgeous spring green color. It's so pretty. So if I do a floral themed necklace, these are definitely going to give the illusion of leaves. So I'm looking forward to that. And then these are absolutely gorgeous, guys. Look at these pretty lampwork beads. 
They give us two different colors as you can see. One is magenta and the other one is lavender. And these are called lampwork glass flower bud beads. As you can see, the hole is pretty big, so you could put them on leather, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these. I'm gonna have to think about it. They're very pretty and they coordinate so well with the collection. And look at this beautiful carved quartz leaf pendant. It is so pretty, guys. It's a very pale golden color, as you can see. It measures 34 by nine millimeters in dimension, and it's drilled through the top, as you can see. So you could definitely put a jump ring through that if you wanted to do an EC design. And as you can see, they coordinate beautifully with the jade beads and the citrine chips. So this is a very nice neutral color to use. But anyway, guys, these are so pretty. I love this palette, I really do. Let me go ahead and get the metals. I actually forgot these beads. Look at this, guys. Look how pretty these are. These are pressed glass leaf beads in a citrine AB color, and they measure 15 by nine millimeters, and they're absolutely gorgeous, guys. I love the AB finish on top of the citrine. It's so pretty. And here they are on my right. I thought I would show you how they're drilled. It's a very unique leaf shape, it really is. And they're relatively thick too, they're not thin, so that's kind of nice. They look gorgeous with the citrine chips. And of course the jade looks really nice with them as well. And now all you've got to do is add a little pop of color like that. Even the green would look nice there. I'm getting all kinds of inspiration right now, so I'm going to have to think about this and see what I can come up with. And here are the metals, and aren't they absolutely gorgeous? I love these. That's what I like about Bargain Bee Box. They give you plenty of metals. They always give you chain, toggle class, bead caps, components, and it looks like we get eye pins this month. So that's kind of nice. But I love these bead caps. Look at these guys. These are so unique. They have a very interesting design. They're calling them three leaf chevron bead caps, and they're relatively large, so these are gonna go really nicely on the bigger beads. As you can see, we get some leafy branch lengths. We've had these before. I remember these from previous boxes, but I don't remember which year or which month. They're very handy to use, that's for sure. And here we have some spacer beads. These are in a leaf shape, as you can see. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna use these, but they would look nice on a pair of earrings or even on a strand. These are absolutely gorgeous, guys. I know we've seen these before, and maybe they came in a different color, I just don't recall. But I know I've seen these before. There's the back. As you can see, they have a beautiful filigree flower design and they have two loops. So you could use these in various ways. I'm gonna to have to think about it. I think these toggle clasps are gorgeous. They have a pretty floral theme, as you can see, and they're a very nice size as well. They're not too big, not too small. So these would definitely look nice in a bracelet. I like this pendant too. This is a leaf pendant, it looks like, and they're calling it a 3D leaf pendant. They're calling this a 3D leafy branch pendant link. And the reason it's called a link is because it has two loops, as you can see, one here and one here. So this one's definitely gonna come in handy. And this chain is very interesting as well. I love this chain. It's so different and so unique. The links are pretty big. They measure five by 12 millimeters in dimension. And the name of this chain is either Lumakina or Lumachina. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But anyway, these links are very interesting. I love them and I love this color. So anyway, guys, these are all the medals. So now I'm gonna take a little break and sit down and look at all these items and see what I can come up with. And I'll come back after I come up with a design. If you'd like to learn more about the Bargain Bee Box, I'll leave a link down below to their website. But basically, it's a monthly subscription box that runs for $19.49 per month, and that includes free shipping in the USA. But one of the nicest things about this subscription is that you get an exclusive coupon for 30% off their sister site, Beadbox Bargains. But anyway, I'll leave a link down below to their website. And if you do decide to sign up, please don't forget to use coupon code MISTY to get $2 off on your first shipment. Okay, I'm back and I've come up with a design and this is what inspired uh, the idea that I have in my head. So the first thing that came to my mind was something whimsical, obviously nature inspired, floral, romantic, with a little bit of fantasy thrown in. So I had an idea to make something like a forest fairy necklace. Don't ask me why, that's just what floated through my mind. So anyway guys, this is what I'm gonna be using as the focal. And for those of you who subscribe to the Bug and Bee Box, this one came in bag number 10. This is the 3D leafy branch pendant link. And this one came in bag number 12. This is the magenta colored lampwork glass flower bud bead. I also wanna use some of these beautiful beads from bag number 15. These are the 10 millimeter pink quartz round beads. And I think I'm gonna use four of them, something like that. I couldn't resist these beautiful pressed glass leaf beads from bag number 14. These are in the citrine AB color. And I'm gonna use them spaced out something like this. 
I think I'll use maybe four of them. I do want to use some of these leafy branch links from bag number nine. And I think I'm only going to use two of them like this. I'm going to drop this down a little bit, I think, and maybe put a green bead there. So we'll be using the bicones from bag number 13. These are so pretty. I'm going to put one at the top of this bead here. And then I do want to put some at the bottom of each one of these. Something like that. And I want to put some at the top of this pendant leaf as well to create the illusion of greenery and maybe some at the bottom here. I don't know how many of these I'm going to need, but if I need more, I can certainly get some more later on. And I think I'm going to put a bead cap at the top of each one of these. And another one on this one as well. And then I couldn't resist this chain because I think it's so gorgeous. So these charms are going to hang on this beautiful chain. So anyway guys, this gives you some idea of what I'm going to be doing today. The first thing that we're going to work on are these leaf dangles. We're going to be using some 24 gauge wire and this is antique copper colored as you can see. And it's also tarnish resistant. And we're going to start by cutting ourselves four three inch pieces. And the reason we need three inch pieces is because we're going to be doing some wire wrapping. So you definitely want to have a generous amount of wire. If you're advanced, you may be able to get away with less. So let me show you what we're going to do. We're simply going to take the wire and thread it through the hole of the bead like this. And since we have a three inch piece, we have plenty of wire to work with. So it really doesn't matter where you put it on the wire. So anyway, now I'm going to take this wire and bend it upward like this. And I'm going to bend the other side as well so that the two ends cross at the very top of the bead. Something like this. And now with some pliers, I'm going to bend this piece straight up like this. Let me just straighten it out a little bit so you can see better. Okay, this is what you want. And now I'm going to bend this piece this way. Let me straighten it out as well so you can take a better look. Kind of like an L shape. So now we're going to do a little bit of wrapping and I'm going to grab the wire right here where the two pieces cross right beside it. And now with another set of pliers, I'm going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Just like that. Now with my cutters, using the flush side of the cutters, I'm going to come in here and snip off the excess. And then you do want to tuck in any little bit that's sticking out. Just like that. Let me just give you a close up so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So now that we've looped the wire around the bead, we have to create another loop at the top. I'm going to use these round nose pliers. These are by Lindstrom and they have a very skinny tip as you can see. And I'm going to place them right here at the very top of where the, the two wraps are, just like that. I'm going to kink my wire this way. Okay. And now I'm going to switch further down the plier so that I can create my loop. And it's up to you where you want to be on your pliers. It all depends on how big the barrels are and how big you want the loop. My loops are going to be on the small side, so I'm not going to slide it very far up. Now I'm simply going to take the tail and wrap it around the top nose of my pliers like this. Flip my pliers around and continue to wrap towards the back. Like this. Remove my pliers. And this is what you should have. I'm not going to finish wrapping. Basically, we're going to take this tail and wrap it right over the top of these two wraps. And since the wire is so thin, it won't be too bulky. Before we do any wrapping with a tail, we're going to attach it to the bottom of this beautiful branch link, just like that. I'm going to grab the loop with some skinny pliers. And now I'm going to take the tail and wrap right over the top of the two wraps that I just made. Just like that. Okay, very simple. Let me go ahead and snip off the excess wire. And 
and you definitely want to tuck in any little piece that's sticking out. You don't want anything sticking out at all. Straighten your loop if you need to and this is what you should have. Pretty cute. Let me remove my wire. So this one's going to go in between these two beads and I'm going to do the same thing to this one here. So let me go ahead and speed up the film so the video doesn't end up being too long. So here's this one now. Now these two are not going to be attached to the branch links. I'm simply going to put them on wire. So let's go ahead and do this one first. And again, you want to wrap it around the top of the bead like this. Bend one piece so that it points straight up like this. And bend the other one so that it points out to the side like this. Let me straighten out my wire a little bit. And now we're going to form a couple of wraps. So once again, I'm grabbing the wire like this with a set of skinny pliers. I'm going to grab the tail now and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess, tuck in the little end, and now with my round nose pliers I'm going to grab right above where the two wraps are like this, kink my wire forward like this, switch to this part of the pliers, and then wrap the tail around the nose, flip the pliers around and continue to wrap to the back like this. And I'm not going to finish wrapping it because I need to attach this to the chain. So I'm just going to put it down for the time being. And let me do the same thing to this one now. Okay, so now we're going to work on these big beads here. I'm going to use one of the eye pins from bag number three. And I think I'll start with the center bead here. So I'm loading a green bicone as you can see. And now I'm going to load a bead cap, just like that. And now I'm going to load the beautiful flower bud bead. And it does have a top and bottom, guys, okay? So the rounded portion of it is the top. And this is the bottom. And it's going to hang like this. Now these eye pins are pretty strong, so I'm going to do a simple loop. I'm going to grab the pin with some flat nose pliers, and I'm going to kink it just like that. I'm cutting off the excess now, leaving myself about half an inch because I want the loop to be relatively big. And now with some round nose pliers, I'm going to go ahead and form a loop. And like I said, it's going to be a little bit bigger than what I'm used to. Just like that. So this is going to go right here like this. And I'm going to attach this pendant to that loop as well as some of these green bicones. And that's why I needed a loop that was a little bit bigger than usual. For the green bicone charms, I'm going to use some ball head pins. And these are really thin, so I can do wrapping with them. I'm simply going to thread one on like this. Bring it down. Grab the pin at the top of the bead like this. Kink it. Switch to this portion of the pin like this. Wrap it around the nose of the pliers like this. Flip my pliers around and continue to wrap to the back like this. Remove the pliers. Grab the loop with some skinny pliers and then with another set I'm going to do some wraps Now let me cut off the excess and you definitely want to tuck in any little bit that's sticking out. So here's one little charm. I'm going to do the same to three more of these. So here are my three. So I have a total of four as you can see. And now I have two more here that I'm going to put on eye pins. So here's one.
So I have two right here. So now I'm going to create a loop at each end. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my wire at the very top of the bead like this, kink it, cut off the excess, leaving about 3 eighths of an inch. And now I'm going to form a loop at this end. And now I'm going to line up my loops so they're facing the same direction. So there's one. Let me do this one now. Okay, I'm back. I changed my mind and I decided to have five of these bicones on ball head pens and one with a double loop. The first thing we're going to do is attach a bicone dangle to this double loop bicone. So let's go ahead and open up this loop and connect one of these dangles or charms. And you do want to make sure you close the loop really well. So there's that piece. And now let's go ahead and connect this pendant to the flower bud. So we're going to open up the loop. Now before we attach the pendant, we have to attach one of these bicone dangles or charms like this. And then the pendant. And then another charm on the other side like this. Let's close it up. I have two jump rings here, a 6mm and a 4mm. So let's go ahead and connect one of the dangles to it or one of the charms to it. And close it up really well. So now let me show you how we're going to connect the rest of these. Let's open up this jump ring. I'm going to hook on one of these bicone charms and let's go ahead and connect it to the pendant, the front of the pendant, and then this double bicone dangle. Let me close it up and then I'll show you exactly what I've connected. So here it is. As you can see, I have these dangling on the front side of this pendant because this pendant does have a back and a front. So it's important that you connect the charms to the correct side. So now all we need to do is connect this last one. And I'm simply going to put this one at the very bottom of the leaf. So let me open up the jump ring. And now let's hook it onto the bottom of this leaf, which has a loop, as you can see just like that. Close it up. So here's the focal and isn't it gorgeous? So now we're going to assemble the quartz beads and that's going to be very easy. We're simply going to thread on one of these bicones and then a quartz bead and then a bead cap like this. And now let's grab the pin at the very top of the bead cap, kink it, wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around and continue to wrap to the back. And I'm not going to finish wrapping it because I need to connect it to the chain. So I'm just going to put it down for the time being. So let me do the same thing now to these other three. Okay, as you can see, I've assembled the quartz beads. So now we're going to cut the chain and we're going to cut two pieces that are seven inches long. Let me go ahead and measure it out. Now, because of the length of these links, it's going to be a little bit more than seven inches, but you can make it as long as you want. It's up to you how long you want your necklace. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this link. And I really don't like sacrificing a link, but in this case it's necessary. So there's one piece. So now I'm going to measure out another length that's identical. So here are my two pieces of chain. I'm going to use two four millimeter jump rings to attach the chain to the pendant. So let me show you how we're going to do that. 
we're simply going to take one of these jump rings and we're going to open it up connect one end of the chain like this connect it to the loop of this pendant and let me close it up so now we have this end connected and now let's connect this end open up the jump ring and now let's connect it to the link of this chain like this and we'll connect it to the loop of the pendant and close it up let me show you what we have so far isn't that adorable I love it so now we're going to connect these charms and that should be relatively easy I have two five millimeter jump rings for these two dangles so let's go ahead and connect them first let's open up the jump ring connect this one here like that and now we need to figure out where we're going to put it on the chain and I think I'm going to connect it to this link here let me show you as you can see it's the second link along the chain and it's the first opening of that link I hope you guys can see that let me go ahead and do the same thing with this one so once again it's not the first link it's the second one and it's the first opening of that link and this is what we have so far so now this quartz bead is going to go on the first opening of the next link let me go ahead and connect it and then I'll show you and now I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers like this and I'm going to do a couple of wraps You can do as many wraps as you want, guys, okay? It's up to you. And now let me snip off the excess. And you definitely want to tuck in anything sharp sticking out. So this is what we have so far. The other thing you want to make sure you do, guys, and I know I mention this every time I use chain, you want to connect your charms on the same side of the links. In other words, you don't want to connect one on this side, on the bottom side, and then the next one on the top side. I think most of you already know that it's pretty much common sense, but I thought I would just remind you just in case. So here's what we have so far. And this chain does shed for some reason, I'm not sure why, but I'm seeing all kinds of little bits everywhere. So now I'm going to connect the quartz bead to this side. And once again, I'm going to connect it to the first opening of this link here, which is the next one over. So here's what we have so far and now we're going to connect this lead charm to this side and this one to this side so once again we're going to connect it to the next link over and it's the first opening of the next link and again you want to make sure you connect it on the same side of the chain And now we're going to create a couple of wraps right on top of these other two that we created earlier. I think I'm going to do three actually. And now let me 
cut off the excess. And now make sure you tuck it in. So now this one's connected and it's so cute. I love it. Let me go ahead and connect this one now in the same way. So here's what we have so far. And now we just need to connect these two quartz beads. So once again, you want to connect it to the next link over the first opening of the next link. Like this. Grab the loop and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess and now tuck in the little end. So now I'm going to connect this one the same way. So here's what we have so far and isn't it gorgeous? I love it. It's so whimsical and pretty and romantic. So now all we need to do is attach the clasp. I have a lobster claw clasp and I have two six millimeter jump rings. Initially I was going to use one of the beautiful flower toggle clasps that came in the collection but I prefer using them mainly for bracelets not necessarily for necklaces. For necklaces I prefer lobster claw clasps. So let's go ahead and open up this jump ring. connect the lobster claw clasp and now let's connect it to this side this is the right side of the necklace and now let's open up this other jump ring connect it to this side of the necklace Tell me that's not adorable. It's so pretty. Look at this guys. Look how beautiful this necklace is. It's a forest fairy necklace. It's so adorable and it's so romantic. I love the combination of the copper and the pink quartz and the check glass. I hope you like it as much as I do. And as always, I'm going to go ahead and put it on and show you what it looks like. It looks different on me than it does on the board, doesn't it? But look how pretty this necklace is, guys. Isn't it beautiful? I absolutely love it. It's so romantic and so feminine. I love this style, I really do. Even though it's a statement necklace, it's not too big, which I like. I like things more on the dainty side. But the nice thing about this design is that it's very customizable. If you want to add more dangles, you can. If you want to make it longer, you can do so. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.